do you know that you can already hack and reverse engineer an already compiled Verilog code? Are you interested to learn such hacking? Let's start our journey to know all the Verilog hacking methods. Hey guys, welcome back. In today's episode, we are going to discuss the below points. First, we will introduce you to the concept of the PLI. What is that in Verilog? Next, we will talk about where the PLI is used. Next, we will show you the infographics, how the PLI works in our standard VLSI design process. Next, we will talk about different types of Verilog PLI routines. Those are evolved over time. Next, we will go through a simple example that is a hello world to the PLI routine. Going further down, we will talk about the different user defined system tasks or functions, those are associated with the PLI routine. And also, we will talk about the conventions that are used for these user defined system tasks or functions associated with the PLI routines. And there, we will conclude our episode. Introduction. C language procedural interface standard and interface mechanisms are ported into the Verilog HDL. So whatever procedural interface standard that was existing in C language that has been ported into the Verilog. This procedural interface known as PLI provides the means of Verilog HDL users to access and modify data structure in an instantiated Verilog HDL data structure dynamically. An instantiated Verilog HDL data structure is the result of compiling Verilog HDL source description and generating the hierarchy model by module instances, primitive instances, other Verilog HDL constructs that represent the scope. The PLI procedural interface provides a library of C language functions that can directly access the data within the instantiated Verilog HDL data structure. So, you can understand that the PLI routine has been ported from C language. Those of you who already have been familiar with the PLIs from the C language or may have used it in the past can very easily grasp the Verilog HDL PLIs. So, here we are done. Let's move on to the next slide. Where the PLI is used? Now, this is a very good question. Where we use the PLI? Let us see. A few possible applications of the PLI routines are C language delay calculators. Now, why we say C language? Because our PLI routines we have to write in C language. And the target to achieve is the delay calculators for Verilog model libraries can dynamically scan the data structure of a Verilog software product and then dynamically modify delays and any and many instance of the RTL code. So that's the usage. That's the first usage of the PLI routine. Next, we have the C language applications that dynamically read test vectors. Here we focus the test vectors because this is a very important factor in Verilog or system Verilog or other data from a file and pass the data into the Verilog software product. The test vector is a very important thing because this determines the checking of the functionality based on different set of combinations of the inputs. Those are called test vectors. However, in system Verilog, there are assertions we are not going in that direction because right now we are restricted into the Verilog PLI routines. Next, custom made graphical waveform and debugging environment that is GUI for Verilog codes. So, this can be developed by a ASIC engineer who is working on the RTL and wants to debug the outcome of a Verilog simulation to the waveform because multiple time the timing things have to be judged to the waveform and that can be done using our CLI and there we can build such GUI to debug those waveforms. Custom made interfaces to actual hardware that dynamically interact with simulation. Here you saw the custom made GUI and here you can see the custom made interface. Interface means it's a hardware interface. It's not a software something. It's a hardware interface. That means you already have a hardware which is talking to your PC where you are running the Verilog code. And those things you can interrupt and intercept to the Verilog PLI routines. 
source code decompilers that can regenerate Verilog HDL source code from the compiled data structure of a Verilog RTL. Sometimes we need from the compiled language we need decompilers. Decompilers is a kind of reverse engineering that helps to go up to the code. Say you have got some code which is already compiled from a vendor and your design is stuck at that point but maybe due to some reason you are not able to see the code or you cannot ask for the code. In that case you need a reverse engineering that is the decompilers. So those decompilers you can design here through the PLI and you can use it for the reverse engineering of a compiled Verilog code. Simulation models written in C language and dynamically linked into the Verilog HDL simulation. So this is a kind of dynamic linking and these are the simulation models. That is a very straightforward thing to understand. And here we are done with the slide. Before moving to the next slide, I would like to say that these are the general usage. These are the general usage of the PLI routines. However, it is not restricted that the usage should be within all these points. The usage could be anything and everything everything get prepared for that you can use it for your own goal provided that you are using the right kind of task or function to interpret and intercept the compiled data structure we are done here discussing let's move on to the next slide how pli works Verilog RTL code. First, any VLSI engineer, that is the RTL engineer, writes the Verilog RTL code and then we go for its compilation. You know very well, this is very easy thing to understand because in past couple of episodes, we have shown hands-on example of the Verilog RTL code and its compilation and the waveform and text outcome. Next, we have the compiled data structure. This is what we cannot see in day-to-day -day work because it stay behind your eyes. But however, there is a compiled data structure. And finally, we have a simulation. The result of the compilation is the compiled data structure. This is very important. Hold on. Why it is important? I am going to explain very shortly. So how PLI at all intercepts this flow? The starting point is user defined task. So this is your written Verilog code as an RTL engineer and here you incorporate the user defined task that is the PLI routine task and it goes for the call of the PLI interface and the PLI routines and the data exchange happen here at this step with the compiled data structure. So this code you write already you know how to write it. Here you are getting familiar and you will be able to write the PLI codes right and through the user defined task and that will call the PLI interface and through which you will have the data exchange between the compiled data structure and the PLI routine. So here is the infographics how the PLI works and here we are done talking about it. Now the idea is clear how the PLI works. Let's move on to the next slide. Types of Verilog PLI routines. Here we'll talk about the Verilog PLI routines that are evolved over time. So there will be a couple of types of PLI routines and generations that we are going to see in this slide. Task or function routines. These are called TF routines. Here, the first point, these are called TF routines made up the first generation of the PLI. So this is the first generation PLI. That is the PLI routines and tasks, everything we are talking about. These routines, most of which starts with the character TF because these are called TF routines. So the routines will start with TF underscore were primarily used for operations involving user defined system task and function and arguments along with utility functions. Next comes the second category that is the access routine. This is called ACC routines. Here you can see these are called ACC routines formed in the second generation of the PLI. The PLI routines evolved over time and the access routine came into the picture as per the need of the time or need of the hour. These routines starts with the character ACC underscore and provide a object oriented access directly into the Verilog HDL structure. So here you can see the striking difference, right? This is a kind of procedural oriented code since we are not talking about any objects, right? Here as the time passed, you can see the object oriented things become more popular and that has to be incorporated and that has been incorporated using the access routine. ACC routines are used to access and modify information of objects inside the Verilog HDL description that is the compiled data structure. Now 
you can see that the next one has already come we are shortly going to that but before that you can see there has been a striking change from the first generation to the second generation right the need of the hour was the objects and the object oriented things and those how we can access because uh, like java c++ all those language came with objects right and the world has seen that how the object oriented things are much more handy to use so those things have been in demand and that has been implemented through the access routines the next thing the next generation of pli routines are called vpi routines let us see about this verilog procedural interface right vpi these are called vpi routines are the third generations pli and this is currently being used the vpi routines are currently being used and in my work experience i have already used these vpi routines however these are not written by me those who are written already by the tool vendor and uh, readily available for the usage most of the time the coders of the verilog simulation software they provide the vpi routines and to some extent these are also becoming ready to use ready to cook kind of things that means the vpi routines for the verification ips inside the verification ips these things the vpi things are uh, will be there because the verifications ips are nothing but to test your uh, verification and make your verification faster so the verification ips from any ip vendor if you are getting those will contain the vpi routines nowadays so this is the latest hot and happening thing obviously you will come across in case you are a rtl engineer this routine starts with character vpi provide an object oriented access for both hdl structure and behavioral objects you come to know about the things that how this is there so it's also object oriented the vpi routines are the super set of functionality of the tf routines and acc routines that is why i said the vpi routines is the hot and happening thing in the front end verification today and these are packed inside the verification ips whatever company you are getting verification ips from those will contain the vpi routines and that's how you can use them readily so all those things are made ready for you you don't have to code it and you can just use it however until or unless you know, don't know the fundamentals you will not understand and you will think these are some alien things and we do not know what we are using and what is inside that and you will consider it as a black box but right Right now, after this slide, you know that the verification IPs will. What are the tool sets inside that? At least one tool set you know that these are VPI routines, which will be used for the digital verification purpose, the front end verification purpose. So here we are done with our discussion of the different ages and generations of the PLI routines, and we also talked about the latest hot and happening VPI routines. So now move on to the next slide. Hello world through PLI. In this slide, we'll show you the infographics, very simple enough, and how a hello program can be incorporated through the PLI routine. So here is our hello world dot v, and here is the content. You can see it is the module, and the name is hello world. We have an initial block starting and ending with begin and end, and here we are calling a user defined task hello world. Now where we are defining this, we will define this in our hello world dot c. And the content of the hello world dot c is here, and here we include this particular header file, and we write a user defined function int hello world, and here we give the I O printf. So this is used for the echoing. That means the echoing of the hello world. And altogether, when we execute through our already shown infographic process, how PLI works, right? Couple of slides back, there we have talked the process through which we get the output. So once we go through that process. our output will come as hello world so this is very simple enough to understand and here we are done with our pli routine and how the pli routine works and how the things call each other so here we are done discussing about the pli routines and the hello world program through it let's move on to the next slide user defined system task and function types In this slide, we are going to talk about the user-defined system tasks and functions that you can write in your PLI routines. We have just shown you the example. Before that, we have shown you the infographics, and now we are going to the details of the task and function types. So let's start. The type of the user-defined system or task and functions determine how a PLI application is called from the Verilog HDL source code. The types are as follows. A user task can be used in the same place of a Verilog HDL task can be used. So this is the beauty. A user defined system task can read and modify the arguments of the task, but does not return any value. This is a very important point. Please remember this. 
A user function can be used in the same place of a Verilog HDL function that can be used. This is the beauty, right? Where you hack into the system and you reverse engineering the system, where you are not using the already provided function or task, you are writing your own task and functions to reverse engineer or break down the data structure that is encapsulated. And from there you are fetching the data. All these things you are doing. A user-defined system function can read and modify the arguments of the function and it returns a value. So very simple enough to understand. So let's move on to the next point. The bit width of a vector shall be determined by a user supplied size TF application. So this is another important point that you should remember. And here we are done with talking about the user defined system task and functions, how they behave and what are their types. We are done here talking and uh, let's move on to the next slide where we will talk about conventions of these tasks and functions. Conventions for user defined system task and function. A user defined system task or function name is the name that will be passed within a Verilog source code to invoke the PLI application. Please remember this is not a standalone thing. It has to pass through the PLI routine or PLI wall and that has to communicate in a proper way up to the compiled data structure. The name shall adhere to the following rules. Number one, the first character of the name shall be a dollar sign. Next, the remaining character shall be letter digits underscore character, right? This is the underscore or the dollar sign. Uppercase and lowercase letters shall be considered to be unique. The name is case sensitive. So remember, this is case sensitive. The function or task name, the way you write the same pattern of combination of the caps, you have to maintain and use throughout. The name can be any size and all the characters are significant. So this is the convention for the user defined task or functions that you must follow as a RTL engineer. So here we are done and in this particular video we have talked about the PLI routines, how they work and what convention you should be using and how in an up to date situation or scenario how the PLI routines any VLSI RTL engineer is using and what is the purpose. We are done here. Let's move on to the next slide. Thank you very much for watching up to this point and don't forget to like, share and subscribe in case you have some dislikes. Put that as in words in the comment section down below and bye for today.